process to introduce us to transition tech. Thank you. Okay, as James said, I'm Nina Wynn, and I am the program coordinator for Resilient Communities at the Institute of Cultural Affairs. And um, the Institute of Cultural Affairs actually became inter interested in transition because it was very much a kindred spirit of ICAs and uh, the fact that it was very much about um, community empowerment and community-driven choices and action and uh, people taking responsibility for um, you know, what they envisioned for their community and what they you know, saw that they wanted to actually have change. And we uh, basically just had several relationships that just kind of all started to align. And um, we had just um, volunteers, local volunteers that were interested in sustainability. And uh, through, through these relationships, um, we actually met Transition Rogers Park. In Chicago, there are, um, I believe, three, uh, trans I'm sorry, four transition initiatives. Uh, there's uh, Transition Rogers Park, Transition Uptown, Transition Jefferson Park, and Transition Hyde Park Kenwood. Um, so uh, basically, there was transitions happening here, and we were interested in, in figuring out, okay, well, what is this all about? And it's really um, about um, the head, heart, <coughs> and hands of community when it comes to sustainability. It's, it's a grassroots level um, model to um, actually take action on what, what the things that you care about in the sustainability pie. Um, so that could be anything um, as far as energy efficiency, that could be um, you know, urban agricultural, local food initiatives, healthy food initiatives, and engaging youth. Um, you know, the, uh, it, it doesn't end there as far as composting. It's really about who's at the table in that community and, and has a passion for what it wants to get moving, not you know waiting on government or uh, you know technology, um, but you know saying what can we do and, and, and what can we um, actually uh, envision for our community to, to see the changes that we want to want to see. Um, like any story, um, transitions has a beginning, and it was about 2005 um, that. Um, Oh gosh, I'm Rob, Rob Hopkins. Hopkins, thank you. Yeah. I was at the same part. That Rod, Rob Hopkins and his permaculture class in Kinsdale, Ireland um, created an energy descent action plan. And so they created this plan um, using um, you know, permaculture principles and, and what you know, they were actually studying and learning in class. And uh, the town council actually saw it and passed it and wanted to actually implement it in Kinsdale. And so um, this, people got word of this and heard about this. And so they started asking Rob Hopkins, well, can we see the Energy Descent Action Plan? Can we see this? Can we see this? And um, basically, he took it back to uh, the UK, and other people were wanting to use this model. Um, the nice thing about um, transitions is it's not cookie cutter. It's, it's totally and completely uh, according to that locality and that community and the needs of the people who are actually wanting to take action on sustainability. So um, that, that's the wonderful thing about you know, taking the guide and the model and, and it not being a prescriptive approach. It's really about um, you know, bottom-up action and, and folks doing things that they're passionate about, being inclusive. And so I, I believe there's something like over a thousand initiatives globally. There's um, well over a hundred in the US. And um, that's just a little bit of history. And then Transition Chicago, um, given that we saw the transition issues happening, we actually initially were like, well, why don't we see like, if there's five communities for you know, 2011 that want to actually uh, do transitions? And so then we were like, I don't know, does this sound right? Does this sound OK? Um, trying to go into like five communities and say, let's do transitions. So, because well, the thing is, is that we were meeting so many people, and we were building a large network, and we were getting to know that so many people were already taking action and doing transition-like things, and moving on transportation, moving on composting, and you know, rooftop gardens, and all of the like. And 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 so we said, you know, we really need to research these, you know, the communities in Chicago, listen and learn, and hear people's stories and why they're taking action in the way that they are. And, and, and
and actually celebrate what they're already doing. And you've seen our maps up there, I hope. Um, you know, they, so, they showed the distribution of over 750 initiatives throughout all 77 community areas of Chicago. And um, that, we, we felt like that was just a lot more natural in, in highlighting what's actually already happening as far as, um, you know, tra transition initiatives and, and that kind of action. And, um, you know, seeing how we might actually you know, build these relationships, make linkages so that we're not working in an isolated effort and we're well linked within our community, um, you know, to offer opportunities for partnership, um, you know, just expanding our knowledge of one another and, and staying connected to the whole um, because a big, huge part of transitions is that permaculture thinking and looking at things holistically. Um, so that is actually how Accelerate 77 came to be. And, um, and how it was related to Transition Chicago. And actually out of Transition Chicago came Transition Uptown. So half of the volunteers created Ch Transition Chicago and still also helped with Accelerate 77 initiatives. And then the other half were just like kind of helping with Accelerate 77 or doing just their own transition you know, initiative like Hyde Park, Kenmore, uh, Rogers Park, et cetera. So that's just a little bit about how, how Transition Chicago came to be and, and how it is now. And um, Karen is actually going to um, share a little bit more about, you know, just how much action is actually being made.